Her surgery is done. How long is it taking for you to get her change of clothes and other necessities? At least call and let us know. From behind my husband's voice, I could hear my daughter-in-law shouting, but it was too late. Hey, I'll buy things like underwear at the hospital store. Please don't go through my drawers. Ever since we got married, my husband hasn't been too keen on visiting my parents' house. Maybe because of that, my daughter-in-law seems reluctant to visit too. On top of that, her child and my daughter's child, meaning my grandkids, are the same age. Whenever my daughter visits our home, my daughter-in-law always seems to be in competition. It's quite a daily hassle. I live with my slightly older husband and Arsene's family. My daughter-in-law was suddenly struck with stomach pain and was taken to the hospital in an ambulance. Fortunately, it was just appendicitis, so her life isn't in danger. My husband and grandchild came to the hospital. Once my son arrived there too, I headed back home to prepare for her hospital stay. I'm sorry, but I'll visit the hospital again tomorrow, I informed them, leading to a shocking turn of events. Marriage is indeed a connection between two families, so it's bound to be challenging. But I believe that is one of the many things that comes with marriage. I can't forgive someone who arbitrarily cuts off that connection and tries to hide it. In the times of old, like during the American Civil War era, that would be grounds for a duel. Or so I sometimes dramatically think. I told them that I wouldn't be visiting the hospital the day my daughter-in-law was admitted but would go the next day. Some emotional preparation is indeed necessary. Well, let's make them brace for my visit. My name is Sharon. I'm 62 years old and work as a freelance funeral director. Lately, funerals are scheduled regardless of certain old superstitions, like specific unlucky days. There are variations depending on different religious denominations, so it's quite a demanding job. But it's a job that someone has to do. That's why I do it with pride. I met my husband through work. Unlike the youngsters these days, I didn't ponder much about a partner's income or profession. After graduating from a community college, I married and had kids in quick succession. Back then, I thought that was just how things were. Now, I'm working and can support myself. Unless I'm head over heels in love, I sometimes wonder if marriage is necessary. My husband is very much of the baby boomer generation, thinking they were the ones who rebuilt America after the wars. I joke saying, you weren't even born then, were you? Maybe because of that, he never helps around the house. Nowadays, men who can cook are seen as attractive though. Even during the times when we had to care for my husband's parents, he never helped. Not even a word of appreciation. Word of appreciation? So, when my in-laws passed away, I had considered divorcing him. However, after living together for so many years, it's not like there's no affection at all. Now that he's retired, he lives a relaxed and comfortable life. I felt he had mellowed down a bit in his attitude. Well, at least that's what I thought until my daughter-in-law came into our lives. My husband doesn't have much of what you'd call hobbies, but he's taken up saying things like, I want to live a long, healthy life, and has started visiting the local library. He mentioned that reading stimulates the brain, and since the library has books from various genres, walking around searching for them also helps strengthen the legs. But it feels like he borrowed novels and other books only in the beginning. Now I can only imagine him dozing off in the library chairs. On top of that, he doesn't help at all with house chores, so juggling that with my job was quite a burden. But thankfully, my son and his wife have moved in with us, and it's been a great help. My daughter-in-law is a stay-at-home mom, so she's been a real godsend helping with house chores. They got married three years ago and have a two-year-old boy. My grandson is so adorable I can't help but spoil him, which often gets me scolded. There have been minor issues here and there, but I imagine these days would last for long. I also have a daughter. She's two years younger than her elder brother. She's the same age as my daughter-in-law, and coincidentally, they gave birth around the same time. My daughter lives nearby and drops by quite often. Maybe because of that, they always seem to be trying to one-up each other. They seem to argue over whose child is cuter. Were you visiting again? Oh, can I come to my own parents' house anymore? I never said that. Tensions rise. Look, the grandkids are playing nicely together. Isn't that good enough? Yes. 
but we're planning to send ours to a preschool program next year. Preschool? What's that? Oh, what a coincidence. We're planning to do the same for our child. You too? Is it a bit early for preschool? Please share and stay out of this. Starting at three is almost too late, you know? Exactly, haha. Huh? Every time the atmosphere turns like this, my daughter-in-law went back to her room without even making tea. But if they're starting preschool at three, maybe my daughter won't visit as often, and my daughter-in-law will have more chances to go out, so I felt a bit relieved. But then my daughter said something odd. Mom, don't you think he doesn't really look like my brother? She said looking closely at her brother's son. Really? People always say young kids resemble many of their relatives. I didn't think much of my daughter's words at that time. After all, even if they're both my grandkids, I can't help but find the one my daughter gave birth to cuter. Perhaps my daughter-in-law senses that because every time my daughter visits, her mood worsens and I end up bearing the brunt of it until she feels better. And I end up bearing the brunt of it until she feels better. My son once told me he got married to his wife through a friend's introduction. When he was around 35, he was getting a bit anxious, so he asked a friend to set them up. It seems his wife had the same motivation. They wanted to have kids right away after getting married and, start and started living together because it was convenient for my son's job. The year after they got married, they had a child and his wife became a stay-at-home mom. She's a typical woman in her 40s who strives to do everything perfectly. She used to do the opposite job of mine. She was a wedding planner. I heard she quit because she wanted to be perfect at parenting. She said she plans to return to work once the kid is a bit older. She's so committed. She once told me she never compromises on household chores. During her single days, she had gotten her share of bridal training. She always decorates with seasonal flowers and is picky about her ingredients. She even changes the scroll in the living room alcove with the seasons. She's a great cook and keeps the house spotless. On the flip side, since she moved in with my son, she won't let me do a thing. You must be tired from work, Sharon. Please take a rest. I'm fine. Just this much. This is my job, she'd say. Not even letting me help with the dishes after meals. Moreover, she made various changes in the house, even reorganizing the workflow of household chores. She apparently rearranged the contents of drawers, too. She even labeled things, so we can immediately know where everything is. My elderly husband found it very convenient and was full of praise, but I felt more and more like it wasn't my home anymore. Sharon, you put the towels in the wrong place again. Oh, sorry, old habits. I'd be constantly getting scolded. I wish she'd at least discuss with me before moving things around. My husband from the baby boomer generation, they say folks from his time like to do things as a group and are sensitive to trends. But my husband wasn't influenced by these tendencies and dislikes being in groups. And of course, he's not into trends. Maybe that's why. But he has always disliked dealing with my family. He has been like that since we got married. These days, they say we live in a century where people can live up to a hundred years. There are surveys saying the average lifespan for men is around 81, and for women, it's 87. My father passed away from an illness two years ago. He lived slightly longer than average, making it to 83. My mother now lives with my younger sister, who's three years younger than me. One day, out of the blue, my husband asked, is your mom still well, alive and kicking? Yes, her blood pressure is a bit high, but otherwise she seems fine. Yes, her blood pressure is a bit high, but otherwise she seems fine. Hmm, I heard the average lifespan for women is around 87. So, what's your point? How old is your mom now? She's 87. What are you getting at? Ha, guess her time's almost up. You should tell her to be careful. Why bring up such an ill omen? Well, you are a funeral director after all. With that, he quickly left the room. Suddenly, I was left speechless. All the memories of my life with my husband flashed before my eyes. Like how he wasn't supportive in raising our kids and the caregiving for his parents. His lack of involvement with my family was another. The more I recalled, the more I realized there were countless incidents. I began to feel that there were limits to my life with him. My mom isn't in the best of health, but thankfully, my sister lives with her. 
my sister is a single career woman. Apparently, they've extended her retirement age, so she plans to work until 65. Lately, I've heard that single people in their 50s and above are increasing, so it's not a rare story. According to a 2020 survey, one in four men and one in six women remain unmarried throughout their lives. Maybe it's because my husband doesn't interact with my family, but my daughter-in-law doesn't speak too highly of them either. Your sister is still working, isn't she? Yes, she is. Well, she's single and a very diligent person. So she must have saved up a lot of money, huh? I wondered what she was trying to get at. My sister's savings have nothing to do with my daughter-in-law. It felt a bit nosy, and I had no clue what my daughter-in-law was trying to say. One day, we gathered at my family home for my father's third memorial. The last time she came, my daughter-in-law made a comment right off the bat. And she did the same this time, too. Doesn't anyone clean out your family house? My mother is old, and my sister is busy with her work. Still, isn't it a bit too messy? To make matters worse, my husband chimed in. Once the memorial service is over, let's head back. Enough. Both of you need to stop. Then my sister stepped in. I did my best to clean. It's Dad's third memorial. Please stay until the end. I beg you. She even went as far as to kneel down. Seeing my sister's gesture, my husband and daughter-in-law finally quieted down, and the situation calmed. The memorial ended without any more issues, but my husband and daughter-in-law left without touching the sandwiches and other food we prepared. My son and I felt terribly sorry toward my mother and sister. When we apologized, they reassured us that they didn't mind, which was comforting. However, I decided never to invite my husband and daughter-in-law to my family home again. My husband has always been stubborn, but he's become even more so since living with our daughter-in-law. Or rather, he seemed to do whatever she says. Then one day, my daughter came over to our house with her child. There seem to be many children's preschools these days, and they went for a trial. That's what she came to tell us. Her child drew a picture at one of those preschools trial and was praised for it. I couldn't help but express my joy. Oh, really? That's amazing. Apparently, my daughter-in-law overheard and felt overshadowed. Without saying a word, she left. I couldn't believe it, but she quickly took her child to a preschool trial. She seemingly couldn't stand being outdone. About two hours later, she came back and told us that her kid drew a picture and got a praise for it. My daughter-in-law looked visibly exhausted, and I felt bad for the grandchild she seemed to be constantly chasing after. I wondered if she was just overwhelmed. When I said, um, that's good, I probably had a tight expression on my face. She then said, Sharon, you clearly favor your own daughter's child more, don't you? She made this remark almost dismissively before vanishing into her room. Later, I learned she'd spoken to my husband, who told me, don't have your daughter visit so often. She's married off now. I was taken aback by his defensive attitude towards her and retorted, it's fine if my daughter wants to come back home once in a while. Yet he just pretended not to hear and turned his back on me. Just in case, I called my daughter and asked her not to provoke any situations. Then one day my daughter-in-law who always tries her best complained of severe stomach pain. My grandchild informed me but she said, it's nothing serious. I noticed her sweating abnormally and kept urging her to go to the hospital. However, she kept insisting she was fine. I tried getting my husband to convince her. But she remained adamant, saying she'd be fine with a little rest. So, for the first time in a while I was doing the housework. It was fortunate that I had the day off from work. Later I heard her groaning in pain, so I finally called an ambulance. I accompanied her, and soon after, my husband and grandchild also arrived at the hospital. Upon reaching, she went straight into surgery. It turned out to be appendicitis, but luckily, it wasn't life-threatening. I contacted my son, and while he was accompanying her, I went back home to prepare some things for her stay. Since my daughter-in-law moved in with us, things have been moved around. Even things I usually kept in a particular spot were moved. First, I found her insurance card and toiletries and packed them in a bag. As I thought about packing some clothes for her, I opened her drawers. While searching, I wondered if she'd be upset if I touched things like her underwear. I had a hard time finding the drawer with her underwear because there was no label on it.
I finally found it, and her underwear was neatly arranged. I also noticed a box about the size of a standard sheet of paper inside the drawer. It might contain soap or something, I thought, but out of curiosity I opened it. Inside were shocking photos of my husband and daughter-in-law. There were also some documents. Upon seeing this, I panicked and fled to my parents' place. On my way, my husband called. Her surgery is done. How long is it taking for you to get her change of clothes and other necessities? At least call and let us know. I quickly replied. Sorry, I'll visit the hospital tomorrow. And hung up. In the background, I heard my daughter-in-law saying, Sharon, I can buy my underwear from the hospital store. Please don't open my drawers. It seemed like a plea from her, but it was too late. I'm out of options now. The photo inside the box showed my husband and daughter-in-law together. What's more, they were pictured with some documents. Both of them held the papers, beaming with joy. The document read, End of Affinal Relationship Notice. It's sometimes referred to as the posthumous divorce notice, but this was the first time I've seen the real thing. This notice is a procedure to end the legal relationship with a deceased spouse's relatives. I heard that its usage has surged by 2.5 times over the past decade. It seems the primary reason people do this is to ensure they are not buried with their spouse's relatives when they pass. All you have to do is submit the necessary paperwork to the city or town hall of your domicile. Once it's submitted, it can't be revoked. It's strictly a procedure to sever ties with the deceased spouse's family. There's no time limit for submission, and it can be done anytime after the spouse's death. However, in the case of this posthumous divorce, only the relationship with the spouse's family ends. The marital relationship remains on record. Thus, it's still possible to inherit property. In my line of work, I only wear pearls. That's why I always keep my other jewelry stored away. But shockingly, all of that jewelry was in that box. I wondered when it became the daughter-in-law's property. It could have been my husband's doing. Anyway, it's clear that they were planning to inherit my assets and sever ties with my relatives, presuming I'd pass away first. To think they had such a low opinion of my family. I had even taken care of my husband's parents, yet my husband never lifted a finger or offered a single word of gratitude. Just recalling it fills me with pent-up anger. The day after my daughter-in-law was hospitalized, I confronted them with this document, accompanied by a lawyer. Why are you coming to the hospital now? Isn't it a bit late? I had some discussions with the lawyer. What are you talking about? Consulting a lawyer? I'll be submitting divorce papers. I declared, slamming down the end of affinal relationship notice and the photo of my husband and daughter-in-law holding it. That's why I told you I can buy my underwear from the hospital store, did I? That's why I told you I'd buy my underwear from the hospital store, didn't I? My daughter-in-law muttered quietly. Huh? That's not the point, is it? It's not like I'm saying I want to divorce you, right? It's a document that says you want to cut ties with my relatives. It's the same thing. I never received a single word of consolation when taking care of my husband's parents. Even until now, he always hated going to my parents' house, and even made my sister apologize on her knees. Things in our home changed constantly, without notice, making me uncomfortable. My jewelry was even mixed in a box with documents. I finally let out all these grievances that I'd kept to myself for so long, and I can't even remember all of them. Please calm down, Sharon. My daughter-in-law said anxiously, but my son retorted, What the hell are you doing behind my back? Just then, my daughter entered the room. Oh, you came to visit me? Trying to lighten the mood, my daughter-in-law, always good at putting on a front, forced a smile. Is it appendicitis? Maybe they should remove some other bad bugs, too. What are you talking about? Probably not the best topic a day after surgery. I hope her wounds don't get worse. I did my research. Your child isn't my brother's, is it? What? No way. That's impossible. My brother was used by this woman. I've done my research. My son was lost for words. You had a relationship before meeting my son. We'll let the lawyer explain the rest. Before I came to the hospital, I had called my daughter. She said she had something to tell me, which was surprising. It's not the child's fault, but if it isn't my son's child, that's a different story. Seeing me distraught, my daughter called a lawyer. 
she left the hospital room with her two kids. Naturally, this wasn't a conversation for young ears. My daughter-in-law had been dating someone before she met my son, but that man was already married. Around the time she was considering breaking up with him, she was introduced to my son, and they got married. When she realized she was pregnant, she was in disbelief, meaning she was seeing both the married man and my son. My daughter, noting the child doesn't look like my brother, had a DNA test done. It confirmed they weren't related. She also had a private investigator look into it. Confronted with the facts, my daughter-in-law finally broke down in tears. It's not what you think. I wasn't trying to deceive anyone. But you did. Why can't we just go on as we have? My husband said who seemed too relaxed about the situation. I'm getting a divorce. Do as you please from now. I said leaving the room. I didn't say I wanted a divorce. He called after me, but I pretended not to hear. I'll go to my mom's parents' place, too. I'll send the divorce papers later. Just when I thought we were living a truly happy life, my daughter-in-law sobbed uncontrollably upon hearing my son's words. My daughter-in-law sobbed uncontrollably upon hearing my son's words. She couldn't keep up the facade anymore and cried out loudly. A concerned nurse rushed in. Does the wound hurt? Are you okay? The kind nurse asked. I silently thought to myself, she probably has pain in her emotional wounds. My husband reluctantly filled out the divorce papers. He can't do household chores at all. The daughter-in-law deceived my son and gave birth to another man's child, which has made it awkward for her to return to her parents' house. She apparently also reached out to the married man she dated in the past, but he ignored her and she couldn't get any child support. Such married men are probably dating other single women. In the end, she's living with my ex-husband, but it's tough getting by on his pension alone. Sending the kids to preschool is just a pipe dream. The daughter-in-law seems to have resumed her job as a wedding planner, but juggling that with childcare is tough. Moreover, she's still saying she won't sign the divorce papers from my son. I wonder if she thinks that when it comes to taking care of my ex-husband in the future, my kind son will come back to her. Well, life doesn't always go as planned, that's for sure. Maybe she's aiming for a perfect life somewhere. I continue working as a funeral director while living with my mother, sister, and son. My elderly mother seems to be the happiest with the lively household. My son seems a bit weary of marriage, but I hope he'll find someone good again. I often think that if I had separated from my ex-husband when I was younger, maybe I would have had another chance. But I'm trying to make up for it now by being a good daughter. Now I'm talking with my sister, whom I've troubled in the past, about going on a trip together. 